Hello everyone and thanks for checking out this video. This is my second tutorial in my How to Play Baron series and today we are going to be looking at reels. Now reels are the most popular of Irish dance patterns and I'm going to be giving you four really really effective reel patterns that you can play I would say to almost any reel. They're super straightforward and they're super effective. I'm Rory and I'm a percussionist and composer and I've taught hundreds of people how to play this awesome instrument, the Baron, in London where I'm based through my course, A Creative Approach to the Irish Baron. Now, I am also a filmmaker. I made a film earlier this year called Hidden Drummers of Iran. I will attach a link somewhere in this video or down in the description if anyone's interested in checking that out. Now, in this course and in this video, I'll be sharing with you my approach, my approach to playing the Baron and what's worked for me and what's been really effective for my students but I have to emphasize that there's so many different approaches to playing this instrument. So this is just my take on it. All of my favorite players play this instrument completely differently. And that's actually why I love the Baron so much because there are really no hard or fast rules. You find the best approach that works for you and away you go. So this is lesson two in my tutorial series of how to play the Baron and it's all about reels. So let's get going. A reel is a type of traditional Irish dance with four regular beats. It's also found in Scottish music and of course music that's influenced by Irish and Scottish music. The most important thing to stress is that a reel is a dance pattern and by design it's to be danced to and as a result it has a really strong regular pulse or beat. Reels are the most common form of dance in traditional Irish music and as I said, it always has four regular beats that go round and round and round. So we can count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, to the music, just like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 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 And so on. So with the reel, we can count four equal beats round and round and round. Now, whilst learning about different rhythms, it can be really helpful to think about rhythm as a concept, as a language, the same way that we think of languages. And if we pair rhythms to words, it can be a really incredibly effective way to absorb rhythm patterns and grooves. So for a reel, we can use the word piccadilly, piccadilly, with its four syllables, and pair this with almost any reel. Piccadilly, 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 and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you're familiar with music notation, or you can read sheet music. Reels are generally in 4-4 four, four time. Don't, you really, really don't need to worry about this or worry about thinking about reels in 4-4 four, four time because like in most indigenous music traditions, the Irish music tradition is an oral tradition. The tunes and songs are passed down from generation to generation by ear. They aren't generally notated. So now that we know what reels actually are, we're gonna look at applying that basic playing stroke that we looked at in my first tutorial, which again, I'll link somewhere down in the description or in the video somewhere. We're gonna build on that basic playing stroke that we looked at in the first tutorial, and we're gonna apply that to the real pattern. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add in some emphasized strokes. So we're gonna add a push on some of those strokes that we're playing. 
and we call this accented stroke or an accented stroke. So by just taking up our bear on and reminding ourselves quickly how that basic playing stroke goes, down, up, 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 down, up. playing that round and round, we're playing the downstroke and the upstroke as even as we possibly can. Now we think of our real pattern, remember we used that word piccadilly. Let's see if we can apply that to the basic playing stroke. We have this real foundation already in place with that Piccadilly. Now all we need to do is count. For each Piccadilly we'll count one, two, three, four. So. Now in order to make this more of an effective real pattern, we're just going to add a little emphasis or push on the P of Piccadilly. Now we add that Piccadilly, 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 Piccadilly. If we add that little push, which is happening on the downstroke, we can create an accented beat on the downstroke, on the heavy beat. and so on. Now the movement that we uh, use in the right hand to get this accented stroke is exactly the same as that shaking that we looked at in the first video, like you're drying your hands, but a bit more of a shake on the first. Piccadilly, 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 piccadilly. So I'm using a little bit of the elbow and it's just like a shake, a heavier shake on that strong beat. Piccadilly, 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 Piccadilly. So try that exact same thing with the tipper. This is the first real pattern. By just playing this Piccadilly, Piccadilly, with an emphasis on the strong beat, you can play this to almost any reel and it will work. It's a basic reel pattern, but it works as a reel pattern. So the first pattern, just putting accents or little pushes on the strong beat, the first beat of each count. It's really worth practicing this first reel pattern with a metronome. I think 60 BPM is a really good starting point. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, another really fun thing that you can do, well, fun is a subjective estimation of this. One, two, <laughs> three, four. But we can use Metro Timer, that app that I mentioned in my first tutorial, which is a free app, to actually count out the four beats of the reel. One, two, two three, three, four. four. So this can actually be a really handy tool for getting used to playing with those four equal beats that we have in the reel and just getting that really ingrained into the brain, into the body so that you can get really comfortable with that reel pattern which has four beats that go round and round and round. So to put that in context, we'll practice this first pattern with some music.
Now, the second real pattern we're going to look at is accenting the off beats. So we've been accenting the strong beat so far. Now we're going to have a look at accenting the off beats. So if accenting the strong beats is putting the push or the emphasis on pi on Piccadilly, 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 Piccadilly. We're going to take that push or that accent and we're going to put it on the dilly. So it's going to go Piccadilly, 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 Piccadilly. So putting that in the hand first, we'll go Piccadilly, 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 Piccadilly. Really effective just doing it in the hand first so that you can get used to the physicality and how the hand is actually going to be moving once it has the tipper. So of course then you can grab your tipper and we're going to do exactly that same pattern, putting the accent on the offbeat, the dilly of Piccadilly. Accenting the offbeat in reels can be a really, really good pattern to use because very often the melody accents the downbeat or the strong beat. So the instruments like baron or guitar, accenting the offbeat can really give the music a sense of gravity, like it's going somewhere and a sense of groove. So we're gonna get our metronome going again and we're gonna take it at 60 BPM. We're gonna keep with the metronome sound counting the one, two, three, four. We're going to be putting our accents on the offbeats. So the Piccadilly, 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 Piccadilly. One, two, three, four. One, Piccadilly, Piccadilly, two, Piccadilly, three, four. Piccadilly. One, So really worthwhile practicing that with the metronome and this one is especially good to practice with that voice counting out the four beats so that we get used to really pushing on the back beat. We're not playing our accented beat with the voice, we're playing it in the gaps of one and two and three and four and. So once you've practiced that there at 60 BPM let's say, you could get onto that playlist and play along with some of the music and see if you can fit that same pattern with the music. It's actually really nice to use a combination of playing on the beat and playing off the beat. So this time we're going to do one round of four doing on the beat, Piccadilly, 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 followed by one round of four playing off the beat, Piccadilly, 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 Piccadilly. So together it will sound like this. We're going to go round and round that and see what it sounds like with the music. It's actually a really nice little pattern, combining the first accenting on the beats and the second accenting off the beats, and we have a really nice little reel pattern that you can really use on almost any reel. Next up, we are going to introduce a new sound on the baron. 
So far, we've just had our left hand inside the drum up against the skin whilst we're playing. And that's a really good place to start while you're concentrating on that right hand and getting that internal pulse and musicianship really going. Now we're going to start to have a look at the hand inside the drum. Now I play the drum on the left hand side like most people do. But if you are left handed as in you write with your left hand, just feel free to alternate everything onto the opposite side. But I'm here, I write with my right hand and I have my left hand inside the drum. So do what works for you. So my left hand is inside the drum and it's just up against the skin. And whilst I'm playing, My left hand is just there, not moving, not really doing anything. I call this the bass sound. I call it the bass because it sounds most like the bass drum on a drum kit. Now I play drum kit as well. So by using that analogy of just thinking about it like the bass drum, the bass drum is a low kind of dead thumping sound. So I tend to call this the bass. Now, the next sound that we're gonna have a look at is the open sound, or at least what I call the open sound. And this is where I have my whole hand off the skin. So my hand is not touching the skin. Now again, this is just the way that I do it. These are the words that I use to describe the different sounds on the bare arm. So there's lots of different approaches. Do check out other people's take on this. Some people call it the tonal hand. But we're just gonna have a look at this open sound. I take my whole left hand off the skin of the drum and I rest the top of my hand at the top of the shell of the drum. And the tip of my thumb is just in touching the skin, barely touching the skin, just to stabilize the drum. So the drum isn't moving, it's still really secure, but my hand is not touching the skin. Now, as you can see on this little video I'm gonna pop up here, this other camera that I've got going, you can see this little dark line here. This is actually where the drum is resting up against the side of my ribs. It's on, in underneath my arm, but actually the side of my body is dampening the skin of the drum. So it's not completely open. Like here, if I took it away from my body. And most of the time when I'm playing the open sound, I actually do have the drum up against my body. It's not a true open sound where there's no part of my body or my hand touching the skin of the drum. And because this wonderful drum that I'm playing here made by Brendan White, because there's no tape on the front of the drum, actually by just using my body to dampen off some of the sound, I can get a more kind of clear, intonant, open sound. So it sounds open, but it's not too resonant. So if you put your headphones in and have a listen to the two, the second that is completely away from my body has lots of harmonics and sort of, uh, there's a lot of different vibrations in the sound. So when we bring in under the arm and we just take off, we cut off some of those higher frequencies and lower frequencies, we've got a clearer. And then contrasting that with the bass sound where our left hand is in again. And as we're working with reels today, we're just gonna take that first reel pattern that I showed you earlier in this video. If you remember, it was the accents on the downstrokes. Now, we're gonna see if we can get four of those counts with an open sound like this. and four of those counts with a bass sound. One, two, three, four. So really important whilst you're starting to move this left hand inside the drum to practice really slowly. Be really patient with it. There's a lot of dexterity and coordination going on. Your right hand is doing a lot of work and now your left hand is starting to move and do something completely different. So by getting that metronome One, going, two, three, really steady, four, 60 beats one, per minute. Two, three, four, 
two, Just three, one second. Four. One. We're going to do two, four counts three, on the open four, sound. One, four counts on the bass two, sound. Three. Like this. Four. So worth repeating that at 60 BPM, just getting really comfortable with that movement and the movement between the left hand going from open to closed. And just practice it with that first real pattern that I showed you with the accents on the strong beats. And this will really be a good way to start moving that left hand and getting comfortable with that movement. Now the final pattern that I'm going to show you today is a syncopated real pattern. Now syncopation is just where we play across the beat in music. So we're not playing on the beat like we did in the first pattern. We're not playing off the beat like we did in the second pattern. We're playing across the beat this time. And we're going to start to introduce a double downstroke as well. So, so far in this series of tutorials we've just been using up, down, up, down, alternating all the time. Now for this syncopated reel pattern, we're actually gonna introduce a double down. So the sticking that we're gonna use for this syncopated reel pattern goes down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. So down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, round and round and round, and this is the foundation for our syncopated real pattern. Now, remember what I said earlier in this video about using language? Why don't we just use the words galloping, galloping coffee, galloping, galloping coffee, as a way to kind of remember how those different strokes are laid out. So let's take galloping. Galloping, ga of galloping is a downstroke, ga. Le of galloping, upstroke. Ping of galloping, downstroke. Galloping. But because we repeat galloping, 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 we've got to do a double downstroke from the ping, of the first galloping, into the second ga of galloping. So, galloping, galloping. Now for this double stroke, we want to keep it really relaxed. Same motion that we have when we're just shaking the hand like that. Give it a go shake. Down, up, down, down, up. Ga, le, ping, ga, le, ping. Ga, le, ping, ga, le, ping. And then coffee is dead easy. It's just down, up, coffee. Down, up. So, ga, le, ping, ga, le, ping, coffee. Now, I can't force anybody to do anything in a YouTube tutorial, but I would really strongly recommend that you practice saying ga, le, ping, ga, le, ping, coffee. So I always, always say to my students, if you can say it rhythmically, then you can play it rhythmically. So, ga, le, ping, ga, le, ping, coffee. Down. So at the moment we're playing it quite square with not really any accents and certainly not any open strokes in the left hand inside the drum. So by just taking that and putting that onto the drum, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. as you're playing it I'm sure you'll probably feel that there's already an emphasis creeping in on the galloping, galloping, coffee, galloping, galloping, coffee. Not least that they're quite hard syllables to say in the voice, but also when we are playing this pattern on the drum, that is where we are accenting. We're accenting in the galloping, galloping coffee. But you might be thinking, oh, that feels like there's three beats in this pattern. Well, there are three accents, but actually it fits to the count of four, which of course, is the foundation of our real pattern. So for example, to put it into context, if we practice this pattern 
with the metronome, seeing how it fits with the count of four, which is of course our real pattern, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. One, galloping, two, galloping three, coffee. One, galloping, two, galloping three, coffee. One, galloping, two, galloping three, coffee. One, and so on. So if we try that with our drum, it sounds like this. One, two, three. And again, Two, it sounds quite steady and quite static at the moment, but when you speed this up, it's such a nice real pattern to play along. It really gives the music and the tune like a sense of gravity and a sense of grooviness. One, two, three, four. Galloping, two, galloping three, four. coffee. And you can probably hear as well that I'm instinctively starting to add in accents on the ga, ga and ka of galloping, galloping, coffee. And at the moment for this one, I'm just sticking with my hand inside the drum on that uh, bass sound. So the whole hand is against the skin of the drum. So once you've practiced this pattern with the metronome, it's a really good idea to see if you can apply it to some real music examples. Galloping, galloping coffee, galloping, galloping coffee. So once you've practiced that really slowly along to some tunes, you can try it a little bit faster. In fact, this groove really comes into its own at faster tempos. So if we take the same tune, I'm just going to play that pattern at a double speed. And so on. So it really is a super effective real groove to use on almost any reel. So let me know how you get on with these four reel patterns. And if you have any requests for any further tutorials in this series, thanks so much for checking out my video. And if you like these tutorials, you can subscribe to my channel, like this video. That would be really, really appreciated. And looking forward to seeing you in the next video. All the very best. Bye now.